energy forecast for Saturday, May 11th. So we have the moon in her rulership in Cancer energy here all day. And of course, this makes us a little bit more introverted. We definitely want to stick to home, to what is tried, tested, true, comfortable, and familiar. And realistically speaking, the Cancer moon allows us to kind of move inward to center ourselves, to ground ourselves, to create a new foundation, if you will, emotionally speaking, on where it is that we now need to operate from. From. We're moving out of the overstimulating mental plane that the moon and Gemini lent us. We're moving away from overthinking and moving into feeling. And so this can be a little bit of an uncomfortable moon transit for many people because it does kind of really heighten our emotional awareness. It puts us in a hypersensitive state where our intuition is definitely coming through strong. But again, there's a huge resistance to change. And again, we have to kind of sit in the funk and realize where it is that we're blocking our own progress in order for us to make a change within ourselves, to see things from a different set of eyes, a different light, so to speak, so that by the time the moon in Cancer finishes her transit and we're about to move into Leo energy, we're building in our boldness and our bravery and our courage to do the hard things, which just happen to be the right things, which is to create some time, energy, distance, space, between us and the attachments from the past that, again, the moon and Cancer is going to have us doubling down on. So there is a lot of, let's call it, inner realm stimulation, inner realm confusion in order for us to find that new grounding point that, again, we will be operating from moving forward. So there are nine different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. The moon and Pluto are going to get things off to a very bumpy start, very tough interaction between the moon and Cancer and Pluto, the great transformer himself retrograde in this Aquarius energy. Now, let me just remind you that Pluto's retrograde is about us realizing the inner power struggle between our heart and our head, old version of self versus new version of self, ego programming versus higher self. There's a power struggle going on. There's some self-sabotaging behaviors going on. And it's up to us to really understand where that darker narrative, those old memories, that old programming is trying to keep a very firm grip on us, preventing us from improving from bettering ourselves, from evolving, from actually moving on. So of course, this is going to trigger a lot of fear, a lot of doubt, a lot of insecurity. It is going to put us in a situation where we are going to hold on to the aspects in our lives, even if they are uncomfortable, for dear life. Why? Because it's familiar, it's predictable. Now, we do have to kind of recognize where it is that we're being triggered in these ways in order for us to realize that this is the egoic programming trying to prevent us from evolving, from growing, from moving on, and therefore we have the opportunity in that realization to override that system. We do have an opportunity to boss up. We have an opportunity to empower ourselves, to feel more in power and in control, especially over our emotions. And whether or not we're going to take it is going to be a true testament to where it is that you're at on your healing journey and the kind of willpower and discipline that you actually have over your mental plane and over your emotions. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer. So this is going to help us out a little bit because whatever it is that gets illuminated to us in that power struggle, in that egoic programming, trying to keep a hold on us, we're going to be able to see it from a different set of eyes. The moon interacting with Chiron is a good indicator that we're going to nip some of that fear-based narrative in the bud and understand where it is that this new version of self has a lot more boldness and bravery and courage working for us than the old version of self ever did. And therefore, we're seeing in real life time where it is that we do have the opportunity to grow out of that particular pattern, out of that particular behavior, where we do have the ability to heal as we're growing through what we're going through, certain parts of our inner narrative, certain parts of our memory bank that is constantly triggering us just when we are getting bold and brave and courageous to make a change, to make a transformation in our lives, where it is that those particular memories, that narrative, those emotions kick in to prevent us from actually evolving. 
So this is actually a beautiful interaction because it allows us to see ourselves from a better lens, a better set of eyes, so to speak. And we're more focused on our strengths, on our growth, on our ability to grow and heal and change and transform than we are content to sit in the uncomfortability of the old egoic programming. Now the sun in Taurus energy is going to come up, bump into this Chiron aspect, feed off of that energy, shine a bright light on where it is that we're building new structures, new foundations within ourself, within our identity, within our ability to grow, to heal, to understand where it is that the egoic programming comes at us to try and prevent us from growing, from healing, from moving on and where it is now because of our new levels of awareness and enlightenment where we can see the path, the plan, the strategy of the darker egoic programming very clearly. And because of that, we can plan and strategize to kind of move maneuver around it so that we're not getting stuck in the same old, same old. The moon and then the sun come together for a semi-square after that. So it's like the moon has it out with Chiron, the sun has it out with Chiron, then the moon and the sun are coming together. This is a semi-square, this is a tension point, a conflict point, but out of those growing pains comes a new level of awareness. So again, the moon in her rulership here in this Cancer energy, the sun shining a bright light in this Taurus energy, what we have to build, what we have to create, what we have to bring to life, what it is that we have to change in our physical realms. Yes, the semi-square is is tension because the moon in cancer doesn't want to change. We have a tendency to hold on to the past, very romanticizing the past, very much really being nostalgic about, oh, do we really want to move on? Oh, do we have to close the door on this chapter? Yes, we do. Okay. We have to be building ourselves up in a brand new way. We have to try new things. We have to understand where it is that Chapters have closed and yet we're still trying to live in those closed chapters. We got to grow up. We got to move on. We have to do the hard things. We have to do the right things. And all of that really revolves around our ability to detach from the old. The moon then goes ahead, makes a positive interaction with Mercury. Mercury, of course, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Aries energy, just trucking along, trying to clear his post retrograde shadow period, which of course will take place on the 13th. So our heart space, the moon, our head space, Mercury, they're working very well together. You know, we have cancer energy, so that is a cardinal water sign. We have Aries energy, that is a cardinal fire sign. There's a lot of power and cardinal energies because we're initiating something new. The water energy has us very emotional, very intuitive, very in touch with our wants, our needs, our desires. The Aries energy has us like spit firing different ideas out, trying to get us excited, trying to get us inspired to move on. And so this particular interaction is going to bode very well for us because there is this like hint, hint, nudge, nudge, get further away from the old, get closer to the new. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, she's going to make a very positive interaction with this North Node in Aries energy. She, of course, is in her rulership here in Taurus energy, taking a very low, slow, stable approach to the change of heart. To the change of worth, to the change of values, first of all, taking place within ourselves. Secondly, where it is that that is going to majorly impact our relationship dynamics and our long-term goals. Venus and the North Node, and again, that North Node trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, our soul's potential. It is a solo quest, an independent journey that we're supposed to be going on at this particular point in time. This is a positive interaction, lucky for us, because if it wasn't, this is going to be a realization on where it is that we have to break away from certain people. But this is a positive interaction, so it means that we are getting more grounded, more anchored, more rooted into what we need to do for ourselves to make ourselves feel happy, to make ourselves feel safe and secure and stable and provided for, and therefore thinking about the future, because again, North Node is the path forward, Thinking about the future, we're starting to see where new options and opportunities are now available to us to make some minor changes in our physical realm that are going to have some major impact 
to us in the long term. The moon then semi-squares Uranus, Uranus being the great awakener in this Taurus energy, going to send a little bit of a lightning bolt through our central nervous systems, getting us all riled up for all the wrong ways, if you will. Um, normally, if this was a positive interaction, Uranus would kind of lend us some insights, some aha moments, some epiphanies, if you will, on where it is that we can do things differently, where it is that we can kind of pivot on this particular path. But this is a tension point. This is a conflict point because the moon in this cancer energy wants nothing to do with new. We just want to settle into the old, even if it's boring, even if it's just, you know, sucking the life force energy out of us. It's predictable. It's familiar. And that is where we feel most comfortable in pouring our time, our energy, our attention. So this is going to create some confusion because, of course, when all of the flags and all of the signs that are waving in front of your face say, hey, let's go this way. And you're like, nope, I've never gone that way before. I think I'm going to go the same old, same old way. Well, you're creating a problem. You're the problem. OK, you're blocking yourself. You're you're blocking the validation. You're blocking the epiphanies. You're blocking the way forward. So, of course, we're not going to gain clarity. Of course, we're going to create more confusion for ourselves because we're resisting the very path that we need to be walking. Here's where things get super agitating. We have the moon in this cancer energy getting into the boxing ring, squaring off, fighting it out with Mars. Mars is the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires. He's in his rulership in Aries energy. The moon is in her rulership in cancer energy. Cancer energy, Aries energy, both cardinal energy. So this is a powerhouse energy. This is initiating energy. But of course, we have the moon in cancer kind of pumping the brakes, which is really ticking Mars in Aries off. And so this is when frustrations do kind of manifest. This is where the ants in our pants are getting the best of us. This is when we are starting to get frustrated within ourselves because we understand that we are screwing up the mission. We're getting in our own damn way. We're messing with our long-term vision and goals. And our mood is up and down and all around. And the Mars and Aries energy brings a certain urgency. We want to rush. We want to hurry up. We want to kind of get things going here. And of course, the more that we kind of lean into that energy and try to hurry things along when naturally and organically, it's not time for that, the more the moon in Cancer digs in the heel, so to speak, and holds on desperately to the old, to the past, to what currently is. And so we're going to get all fired up our feelings are going to be all over the place there's going to be some major negative nancy narratives kind of kick in here the impulsivity that mars and aries is going to lend us is going to just cluster f our inner peace and inner harmony because again the moon in cancer energy wants nothing to do with moving on wants nothing to do with initiating anything new wants no need for any kind of action and so that is a very challenging aspect. And again, just a reminder that, you know, this tension point is a growing pain. This is illuminating where it is that we're being too stubborn. We're being too hesitant. We're being too resistant. And where it is that, again, we're messing our own flow up. The moon in Cancer energy is going to show us what it is that we're overly attached to people, places, things, and thoughts and feelings, and where it is that those particular attachments are really cluster effing our futuristic goals, visions, dreams. So that is going to be a very, very tricky energy to actually find peace and harmony and comfort in. Now, shortly thereafter, the moon in Cancer is going to semi-square Jupiter. So Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He's in this Taurus energy. Now, this isn't as intense as a full square. However, coming out of that square with Mars, uh, we don't need much more agitation layered on here to really put us in a tizzy. And so the moon interacting with Jupiter in this way, we are kind of closed off to growth. We don't want to think about growing. We don't want to think about evolving. We don't want to think about the options and opportunities. We don't want to think about building and creating and bringing something new to life. We just want to find peace and harmony and contentment with what it is that we currently have. We want to find, let's call it happiness to settle for a life, for a realm, for a reality that up until a couple of days ago, we were actively trying to get out of. But again, the minute that opportunity knocks on the door, we get all kind of, you know, closed up. We retreat. We're like suddenly, oh no, I just wanted the opportunity to knock on the door. I didn't actually want to answer the door. 
And so again, this is going to highlight for us where it is that we're actually working against ourselves at this particular point. And out of this frustration is going to come a very powerful realization that is going to put us in a different emotional and mental space over the next day or two to kind of get a grip, to grow up, to get out of our own damn way and to prepare ourselves for major moves. 